Hello, today we will look at Abdullah Glutid, which has a trade name of Trulicity, and that belongs to the group of medications called GLP-1 agonists. GLP-1 stands for glucagon-like peptide 1, and the agonists refer to these agents activating some receptors in some cells, called the beta cells, in an organ called the pancreas. And this will secrete now insulin, which further goes into the blood to move the glucose, which is sugar, from the blood now into the cells. And the GLP-1 agonist not only enhances the secretion of insulin from these pancreatic beta cells, but also stimulates the growth of these cells. And as we know, the problem in diabetes is that the pancreatic beta cells reduce in number until the point where no insulin can be produced anymore. And therefore, it is very important that GLP-1 agonist stimulates the growth of these cells. And the third mechanism now of dulaglutide and the GLP-1 receptor in general or to decrease the inappropriate glucagon secretion. And first of all, what is glucagon? Glucagon is a molecule, just like insulin, that works as a counterpart. This means that glucagon acts oppositely to, in, so instead of moving glucose now into the blood cells, it promotes and increases the glucose in the blood. So when dulaglutide is in the body, it will decrease this inappropriate secretion of this molecule. And therefore the overall effect causes a raised amount of insulin while having a reduced amount of glucagon. And in that sense, we will reduce glucose in the blood, which is our main goal in diabetic patients. The fourth mechanism of dulaglutide is to slow down gastric emptying, meaning food would move more slowly through the stomach and then prevent this massive spike of glucose in the blood after a meal. The fifth mechanism causes a reduced appetite which decreases then glucose absorption further. Dulaglutide can be used now as a monotherapy or add-on therapy, which means that it can be used alone or together with other medications, like for example, metformin. And before we give dulaglutide some parameters such as your weight, glucose levels in the blood, and the hemoglobin A1C have to be checked. And the hemoglobin A1C just means that we have a glycated hemoglobin molecule. And this hemoglobin is the molecule now that transports oxygen in your body. And hemoglobin A1C refers to the glycated part, meaning the sugar attached to this hemoglobin. And this sugar attachment usually happens when glucose is very high in the body for an extended time. And therefore, the blood level measurement will show that this patient has had chronically very high levels. And notably, this is result is not only at the time of the hemoglobin A1C measurement, but for a very long duration, such as three months or more. And interestingly, type two diabetic patients that benefited most from this dulaglutide therapy were overweight patients and patients with very high hemoglobin A1C. And the dulaglutide has now some more advantages over other diabetic medications. For instance, it has a very high glycemic efficacy when compared with the other diabetic medications. Uh, glycemic efficacy just means that how good is the medicine at lowering blood glucose levels. The second benefit of dulaglutide is that it promotes weight loss. And as mentioned before, it slows down also the gastric emptying, making food move more slowly through the stomach, and it also causes then a reduced appetite. Third benefit is that it reduces cardiovascular risk factors. And these are several health conditions that can increase your risk for heart disease. However, dulaglutide lowers the risk for cardiovascular disease. Next uh, benefit is the administration. So there's no specific administration timing, meaning the patient can take it at the most convenient time. Also, it can be administered without any regard to meals, unlike other medications that have to be taken with food, for example. However, dulaglutide has some disadvantages also. One drawback is that it can be expensive, but hopefully it will be cheaper and cheaper with time since the GLP-1 agonists are proven superior to many other diabetic medications. Another pitfall is that some patients experience gastrointestinal side effects and also some patients prefer oral medicines, but dulaglutide is only, as we know, available as an injection. Additional concerns from some scientific studies show that dulaglutide might worsen diabetic retinopathy when high blood sugar levels uh, damage the back of the eye, particularly the retina part. And also dulaglutide may play a role in gallbladder disease. However, 
please note that the percentage of patients with adverse effects such as for example gallbladder disease or worsened diabetic retinopathy is very minimal and after checking three parameters now we check the weight we check the blood glucose levels we check the hemoglobin a1c and we also need to exclude some contraindications before starting the medication and the contraindications are conditions that are contrary to or against these medications thus making it inadvisable in simple terms some things have to be ruled out before starting the medication otherwise it is harmful to, for the patient so one contraindication of dulagability is if the patient has hypersensitivity to the medication Hence, did the patient take dulaglutide before and had an allergy to it? If yes, never use dulaglutide again. For the next contraindication, details of the patient's medical history are essential because we have to ask if the patient has a personal history or family history of medullary thyroid cancer. Personal history means, did the patient have a medullary thyroid cancer in his life? Is it known? Family history of medullary th uh, thyroid cancer would refer to some of his family members having this type of cancer. And if yes, then dulaglutide is not advised, okay? The next contraindication is whether the patient is pregnant or not. Is the patient pregnant or breastfeeding? If so, don't give it. Another contraindication before starting dulaglutide is whether the patient had multiple endocrine neoplasia syndrome type two or men two. And if so, then it's not advised. Last contraindication is gastroparesis, which means that the patient is having difficulty digesting food. And as we mentioned already, one of the mechanisms of GLP-1 receptor agonists was to slow down gastric emptying. And if the patient already has difficulty digesting it and it is slowed down even further, that can be dangerous. And if that is the case, then dulaglutide is not advised, okay? Dulaglutide is administered with a multi-dose pen similar to that of insulin, but note that dulaglutide and insulin are very, very different. So dulaglutide is given once weekly. However, dulaglutide can be used with insulin as an add-on therapy, as we mentioned before, but it is essential to reduce the insulin dose to prevent hypoglycemia. We administer dulaglutide once weekly, any time of the day, with or without food. And dulaglutide must be given on the same day each week. And to do it effectively, you pick a day like Saturday, which you can easily remember, and also set the reminder of that day on your phone or let some, uh, somebody notify you on those days. However, suppose you forget now a dose of dulaglutide, when should it be administered again? Dulaglutide should be given as soon as possible within three days. And the time between two injections should be at least 24 hours, uh, seven to two hours. And dulaglutide should be subcutaneously then injected into the abdomen, into thigh, upper arm, and the doses will be 0 0.75, 1.5, 3, and 4.5 milligram, which is the maximum dose. And dulaglutide cannot be used intravenously or intramuscular. The recommended starting dose is 0 0.75, once weekly. However, the dose may be increased to 1.5 or higher once the weekly uh, glycemic control is measured and we see that we need to increase it further. Okay, And it all depends on your blood glucose levels and it has to be in the normal level. However, you might have to wait at least four weeks for a particular dose of dulaglutide to be given before we start to increase it further. So also note that no dosage adjustment is necessary for kidney insufficiency patients. So that's a very good thing. However, watch out when starting dulaglutide and increasing the dose of the medication. Watch out then for the symptoms. Now let's see how we inject yourself with dulaglutide, which we know has a trade name now, Trulicity. The first step is to select an injection site, whether the upper arm, thigh or abdomen, and we disinfect the skin. The second step ensures that the injector pen is locked. The indicator would be pointing towards the locked symbol the third step in then is to remove this injector base cap and don't try to cover it again, otherwise it will damage the needle. And the fourth step is to place the flat base of the injector pane on your skin at the chosen injection site firmly. Remember the needle is hidden in the base. Unlock it by turning the lock right on the opposite end. The fifth step is then to press and hold the injector pen, making a subcutaneous injection. And there should be a loud click when you inject it. And please keep the button for about five seconds before you start to release it. After hearing the second click, which means that the needle is retracting, please remove the injector pen from your skin and safely dispose of it. Okay? While taking Dulagote, we must regularly check your body weight, heart rate and blood glucose levels.
And additionally, we check the hemoglobin A1c about every six months or twice yearly in patients who have stable disease and are meeting the treatment goals. However, we can re review it more regularly, such as every three months in patients who are not meeting the treatment goals. So, we talked about general information now on dulaglutin and the uses of this dulaglutin, what to check before giving the medication, we checked uh, the steps on how to administer dulaglutin and the dosage of dulaglutin. Now we will discuss the side effects. Possible side effects include gastrointestinal problems such as nausea, vomiting, constipation, diarrhea, flatulence, abdominal pain. These are the most common side effects, all kinds of abdominal discomfort. And generally, GLP-1 agonists do not cause hypoglycemia, but sometimes it can happen with insulin and sulfonylurea together, so when used at the same time. Tachycardia or fast heart rate can also occur, but that is usually rare. And let's make a quick recap now. Dulaglutid is a GLP-1 agonist together with semaglutid, exenatid, lixisenatid, and liraglutid. And I remember them with the acronym CELL-D. The trade name of dulaglutid is Trulicity, it is used as medication in diabetes mellitus type 2. Dulaglutid can be used alone or in addition with another medicine. The recommended starting dose of dulaglutid is 0.75 mg once weekly. However, the dose may be increased to say 1.5 mg or higher once weekly and then 3 mg or 4.5 mg depending on the glycemic control. Once again, the benefits are high glycemic efficacy compared with other diabetic medications, which means that it is good at lowering blood glucose levels. Dulaglutid promotes weight loss by reducing the appetite and also slowing down the gastric emptying. And this reduces also then the cardiovascular uh, risk factors that you have. It is easy to administer it. It is given once weekly on a chosen day and that was it. I thank you very much for listening. Take care. Bye-bye.